Uh, this is Dr. Murphy. I think you've had. Uh, yes, we changed that. Intensive care unit. Doctor, take care of your mom. Okay. Hello, Nancy Moody. Yes, I'm the head of the ethics committee, but I usually work for the medical school. I'm Luke Bruce, I'm a member of the Ethics Committee as well. It's nice to meet you. Thank you. Now, I thought we would kind of like to start in, um, how do you pronounce your mom's last name? Zarnowitz. Zarnowitz? Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, obviously, you're the daughter of Ms. Zarnowitz. Yes, Is there any other family that no, we should involve? I have no other brothers and sisters. I'm an only child. My mother does have a sister who lives in Wisconsin. Okay. Do you have a, a husband or anybody you'd like to? be with you when we talk about your mom? No, that's okay. I'm fine by myself. Okay. We kind of like to start with getting your understanding of your mom's condition, okay. and then we'd like to kind of see Dr. Murphy's perspective and kind of see where we're at. I know what we've heard is that your mom's very sick, and we haven't got a chance to see her, but uh, Dr. Murphy's seen her, and I'm going to talk to you about her condition. We'd like to know kind of what you're thinking. Well, my mom's a real fighter. She's been very sick for a long time. Now, doctor, she's been admitted to the hospital several times, but she's determined to live, and I think this determination is what brings her through these bad times. I call them bad times. She's been in a nursing home for several years, but every time she has a problem or an infection, which seems to be her major problem, she keeps getting these infections, and she always rallies, and the penicillin or whatever drugs they give her here seem to help and then we are able to take her back to the nursing home where she likes to be and where she's very happy. Good. And but so she's been in the hospital a lot and Yeah, she's been does in she the always come back time. as strong as she was before or has she changed at all over the last six months a year? Well you know, she's getting older, we're all getting older, but I wouldn't say that she's a lot weaker than she was six months ago. Before she came in this Before time? Before she came in this Before time. This time. Yes. Okay. And what's your understanding of her diseases as far as why she's so sick and in the ICU and has the tube in her well, mouth now? Well, you know, they say that she has cancer and she's had it for a while, but, you know, I'm under the impression that it's not life or death today. You know, maybe the doctor can explain it a little bit more. You know, I really think that if they just give her whatever she needs, she'll be okay. You know, she's a fighter. She wants to live. She's asked that the hospital do everything that they need to do to cure her, and that's what I would like them to do also. And I'm sorry, but Marie, has she ever said how she would like to pass away? Oh, no, no, no. She never no, brought she's that, never up. that up. No, I'm, Have you ever, and you've never brought that up? No. How would you see that. her passing? In the nursing home, in the hospital, in your home? Well, How would I, you see it? I don't really think I've ever given that any real thought, you know, as far as, um, you know, when it happens, it will happen. But I don't think it's something I'm planning on for my mother. You know, I mean, I'm not saying I want to put my mother in this chair so she can die there. I mean, is that what you're asking me? No, I was wondering how you think your mom would like to pass away. Um, would she'd like to be at home or I don't think my mother would like to pass away. Sure. I think would she know, have any preference one way or the other in the hospital or at home or with medicine, not with medicine? Sort of kind of thing. Yeah, I have to say that I, I think that this whole discussion just doesn't fit with the facts. That I think and what are those facts, Murphy? beyond the point of having that kind of discretion, mm -hmm. that she's in an intensive care unit mm -hmm. in extremely mm -hmm. critical condition. And I want to say to you that we have done everything we can to cure her. At this point, I don't believe we can cure her. I believe all we're doing is pouring medications into her that aren't changing her condition at all and that we need to stop. And how is this different than her other infections that she's able to clear up and get out? Well, her cancer was unresectable at diagnosis at six months, which means that we consider it not a fatal diagnosis. And usually patients with uh, unresectable colon cancer the outside of their survival is around six months. So she's lived about as long as we expect someone in her condition to live. Um, she's had several of the infections, but what is different this time is that in addition to the infection, she has got um, something going on that's causing the fluid to accumulate in her lungs. She's either uh, thrown a clot that is uh, affecting the lungs or her heart is no longer functioning properly. Um, she's been bleeding heavily. And as fast as we can pour, pour the blood into her, it is coming right back out. 
We are putting so much fluid in her to try and maintain the blood pressure that it's just oozing out of her skin. Um, she oh, hold has. On one second, Ms. Dr. Merton. Do, do you understand any of these kind of terminologies? I'm understanding some of it, yes. Okay. So, some what, what are you understanding as far as these, how this is different from the other elements? Well, it sounds like the doctor is saying that it is much more serious this time. Um, you know, in, as far as the infections are concerned, no antibiotics are helping them. Is that what you're saying? I think that in light of anything else, of everything else going on, that her heart is failing, her lungs are failing, her colon cancer is invading her abdomen, she's bleeding, she's probably got a stroke or something else going on in her brain, we're not sure what. In light of all of those things, there's no point to starting antibiotics. And Dr. Murray, are you saying more that this, the condition of her mom is such that it's out of our hands? The yes, I believe that there's nothing, there's nothing we can do to reverse this. That this is and something this that point, has happened that no that matter anything is that we do. in the last stages of dying and that we need to let her go. And do you think that these are decisions that we're making or do you think the disease is I think that everything we're doing her? makes no difference other than to potentially cause her pain. I can't I mean, I, I don't want my mother in pain. I mean, this is very important to me when you say causing pain or stopping pain. I, whatever is going to come of this, I do not want my mother in pain. And what kind of things do you think would be causing her pain? I think that with pouring all this fluid into her such that it is oozing through her skin, um, I mean, she is so swollen, and it's clear that her kidneys are not even functioning. I can't imagine, you know, we don't know what people feel in these conditions, because everybody who's in this condition dies from it. So we never have the chance to talk to someone. We don't know what kind of pain people feel, and to some degree, believe that you know involves your metaphysical belief of what pain is. But we are torturing her body. We are shoving fluids into it so fast that they're just oozing out of her. That's not even staying in the veins where we're putting it in. She's bleeding blood out as fast as we can put it in. How do you think we can help her? How can we not have pain? You're her. That we need to. Pain. I think that we need to stop the medications that are keeping her blood pressure. Um, the artificial blood pressure medicine? Yes. I think is there artificial blood pressure medicines that yes. she's given? Yes. She is without blood pressure medications, without these medications maintaining her blood pressure, I believe she would have died days ago. Um, a normal blood pressure is somewhere between 90 systolic and about 130. And then people who have high blood pressure can go up as high as 210, 220. Hers is 30. She's not getting blood to her brain. I mean, her brain has been starving for as long as her blood pressure has been like this. And we're just prolonging things with these medications. And is she getting, I know she, you said that she had a breathing tube, and um, has she had a breathing tube before? No, I don't believe she Do we give medicines, breathing. or do you give medicines for people with breathing tubes to make it more comfortable? We, if they show any signs of being alert or awake, then we give, it, give medication. So we currently do have her sedated. Um, so sedation. sedation, we're not giving her pain medication, we're just giving her sedation right now. Uh, but we haven't tried taking the sedation off in 48 hours, and it may be that she's not conscious even without the sedation. So she's on the blood pressure medicine, the sedation, um, and then she has the tube in. And what you'd recommend for your mom, for your mom is that we take away the artificial blood pressure medicines and decrease the, the fluid or stop, stop the fluid the fluids. because she's, she's got so, so much fluid so on her. Loaded. And do you, would you continue the sedation for her, sure. for the breathing tube? I would continue sedation. I would give her pain medications. Uh, I don't want to do anything to make her uncomfortable. And you talked about blood products and things. Would you want to keep giving those or not give those because of the fluids? And what's your understanding? Because you know, that's a resource that you know isn't renewable. And this can't help her. She bleeds it out as fast as we put it in. And Ms. Wall, my mother's you... request when she came to the hospital, sure. which is my request to you, is that everything that the hospital can do should be done. Can you sure. sit here and tell me that you are or have done everything that this hospital is capable of doing? We have done everything that is a possible benefit to her. Have we can go on. We could go on for a long time pouring medications into her 
and it will not do any good. And that's why I would like to stop. Yeah. And you had, you had stated that you wanted your mother free of pain at birth. So, can we summarize again what would keep her the most comfortable? I think stopping everything except the ventilator would keep her most comfortable and would make the most sense medically. And medications, if they need the sedation? No, we'll continue the sedation, but I would stop anything that is not directly related to comfort which I would consider to be pain medications and sedation, and the ventilator. And Ms. Walt, do you understand what Dr. Murphy is saying as far as how this yes, IC stator is different? Dr. Murphy is saying that she would recommend leaving her on the ventilator and keeping her sedated. Are, do you have any time frames here? I mean, are you telling me that this is going to last for days, weeks, months, hours? I mean, what, what are we looking at? I think if we stop everything, it will be a matter of hours at the most. I think if we continue doing everything, we might be able to drag this on for a week. So Maybe. if you continue doing everything you're doing, she would probably die in a week. Or less. Or less. I think that if we, if we were extremely good at everything we were doing, and I think it's unlikely, we might be able to drag it out a week. But you're saying my mother is going to die today or in a week, regardless. That's my opinion. It sounds like with it. It sounds like she has different things going on this time, Mrs. Wallace, as opposed to the other times that you brought up. It sounds like it's more than infection this time. You know, just a few days ago, we were talking about her being discharged and being put in the nurse back in the nursing home, and so this is a total turnaround for me. I, you know, I'm having a hard time digesting all of this. Sure. She and hasn't been in the intensive mind. care unit before, has she? No, she so, hasn't. So, I mean, so you knew this was different. Yes, yeah, so She hasn't been, been on the bed later before, so there were a number of things that were different. And I believe when I talked to her initially when we had the diagnosis, I told her this wasn't something we could treat, that we would treat her pain if that became an issue, but that this was a cancer that we could do nothing about and that would be the cause of her death. So she knew that. Dr. Murphy, if I'm understanding correctly, it sounds like no matter what's decided at the table, that Ms. Zonowitz is extremely sick and will not live. Right. Do all these things need to be resolved right now, or could we kind of try and look at what probably the most important things are? Because it looks like you know she wants to be adequately treated for pain and make sure that she's comfortable. And that's what I want to do. And but I do not and we want do to do that with sedation and continuing the medicines. I don't and want to by start decreasing the IV fluids. I want to stop the IV fluids. I want to stop the pressors. And I do not want to do CPR. And Ms. Wall, how do you feel about those requests? Well what's your understanding, I guess, of CPR? If your mom if your mom's heart stopped, what what would you would you want her to have CPR? And if you did do you think that she would be helped by it, or that she wouldn't be helped by it, or how do you how do you see that? Well, I think if it was me in my mom's position, sure. I would have a little different perspective of the situation. You know, the only thing that keeps ringing in my ears is my mom saying, "I want everything they can do done," sure. because she lives loves life. She Sure. She lives her life as full as a woman her age can do. Sure. And, and I, she seems like she's really been a fighter through this whole right, illness and done a remarkable job by, by everybody's all account. All it sounds like, though, that this time she's right. up against that the illness has progressed, right. that we don't have kind of decisions like we used to. The only way I can rest with this is if. I believe in my heart that this hospital has followed her wishes to the extent that they have done everything that they could do for her to be cured. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you can tell me that this is beyond hospital ability and this is in God's hands, then I will be able to accept that. But I have to believe that everything that could be done is done because those were my mother's wishes.